Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Next Goal Wins. Leicester play Southampton tomorrow away at St Mary's, 3 o'clock kickoff. Let's talk about the game now, what I think is going to happen, stats and stuff like that. So what I think is going to happen in the game then? I think it's a really tough game Southampton away, obviously we're both coming off victories. Theirs uh, arguably better than ours in the sense it was against Chelsea, despite Chelsea being in the dundrums of the league. But yeah, obviously Southampton had a wonderful win last time out at Stamford Bridge, beating Chelsea 3-1. Pella, Mane, really, really influential in that game. Obviously, Davis, well, the, the Northern Ireland international who qualified with his, his nation recently for the European Championships. But Southampton are a really good side. I mean, like I said, they've got Mane's pace. They've got Pella who can, who can finish the ball with his head or on the floor. He gets goals. Luckily for us, I think they are missing Shane Long. Got injured on Republic of Ireland duty, obviously, recently in the European qualifiers. And he won't be playing and Long scored a double against us last season in this fixture at St Mary's. Both games actually last season interestingly finished 2-0 to the home side with a brace from each player. Obviously Long at St Mary's and a lot of you remember Mares at the back end of last season scoring two at home for us when we when we turned them over 2-0. And I don't think this one is going to be 2-0. I think it'll be a bit closer. Obviously we haven't lost... Uh, in the last seven Premier League away games, so that bodes really well. But like I said, Southampton are coming off a bit of good form, and despite Shane Long being injured, they've still got enough talent in that team who should be able to cause us problems. Jordi Classe will be making his debut for the club probably. The, the signing that Koeman bought in the Dutch international in the summer hasn't played since uh, July when he, he got a hamstring injury, and it looks like he could be starting. But the players I think we really have to watch out for are uh, Mane and Pella, as I said. Mane, we know, has an abundance of pace, can finish, can get past people, and if he gets in behind Morgan and Hufu, I imagine will start for us then, I think we could be in a bit of trouble, just because his pace is, is such an influential factor in that team. Pella, like I said, he scores their goals, especially with Long out now, Pella's going to be starting up front, and he scores their goals, so if they get it to him in the air, it will cause us problems. One good thing about him is... Our centre half should be able to, to combat him quite well. They're kind of the same types of players. Most of the time, when he outbeats players in the air or, or on the ground, it's against defenders who are either smaller than him or not as strong as him. So I think we should be all right in that department. Looking at us, you imagine the strongest team's going to play. You imagine Mares is going to play. You imagine Vardy's going to play. Okazaki probably will play. I'm not too sure about that one, though, purely because of his form, but obviously. He's coming off an international break, Ranieri will have to make that decision, or has already made that decision. Uh, apart from that, it's going to be, I imagine, kind of the same team who we played against Norwich. I, I'm not sure if Schlupp will play left wing and Fuchs at left back again. It could be Albrighton back in the side, purely because so we can, I think we can get past Southampton's fullbacks with pace. I'd play Schlupp, but obviously Albrighton for set pieces and stuff is really invaluable in the team, but you, we can't really change too much, I don't think, from the last time out when we beat Norwich. I would bring in Mares, though, just because he he offers so much to our team going forward. He's the shining light in the team, and he almost draws double attention to him, so just from having him on the pitch, two players, you'd think, would ebb over to Mares, leaving someone else free in the middle. I can't think that Inla's going to start. It would be nice if he did, but the form of centre midfielder so far this season without him in there has been exceptional. Kante obviously has to play. Should be fresh as a daisy. He hasn't had any international obligations to, uh, to to attend to. And I think he's going to be really important for us. Distribution and breaking up in the middle of a play is huge in the Premier League. And Kante is arguably one of the best in the Premier League at doing that. Wanyama, we know, is strong on their side in central midfield. They lost Schneidlin, but they've got uh, Jordi Klasse now, who probably will play in there, or Davies. But uh, Wanyama's one who, if Kante can get a ball off him and really stop that distribution from deep from Southampton into the wide channels, into Tadic for example, into Mane, then really I think that's the, what we need to stifle in Southampton's play to stop them getting that. And another thing we need to do is test Southampton. Martin Steckenberg has only made 10 saves I think it is this season, which is the lowest in the Premier League. He's only had to make 10 saves. Obviously Southampton have conceded a few goals, but he's only made 10 saves. And to put that into perspective, Davide has made 14 saves in half as many games as Stecklenburg has played. So we really need to test the keeper. Stecklenburg was good a few years ago, but can he still do it? We need to test him with shots from distance, shots from anywhere, and Vardy obviously is the key for us. Jamie is coming off incredible form, featured both times obviously for England, once at Wembley and once away. Uh, didn't really make too much of an impact for England, but he's not a focal point of the England team like he is for, for us. 
scored in however many games it is in a row now and has just been brilliant this season. Been a revelation from the player we signed to where he is at this point in his career now is incredible to see the journey he's taken, not just in terms of the progression through the leagues, but in terms of the progression of, it, of his play. I think Ranieri really has got the best out of him in terms of football knowledge. Under Pearson he was fast, but he'd run around sometimes a bit like a headless chicken, whereas now he's making intelligent runs, leaning and bending runs off the, the last defender, like Henri used to make. For his goals against Tottenham, you saw that, especially his first one. He, he kind of ebb and flow his run in behind the centre-halves, and it was key for us to get a ball into him in the channels. His pace is just so, so threatening that any time he kind of runs towards the ball, the defenders aren't sure what to do. They have to deal with it quickly because they think, oh, God, he could be on us any second now. So Vardy, we know he's going to be massively influential for us. I've talked about Kante. I've talked about Inla. And I think another person who, who could be really influential for us is Schmeichel in goal. I think Kasper, obviously, he didn't qualify with Denmark for the European Championships. He's going to have playoffs to, to attend to in recent weeks and months. But... For us, I think he's so important because he makes so many crucial saves. And I think he's going to have some more to make this weekend because Southampton are an attacking side like us. Koeman sets his side up well. Koeman's a manager I really like and really appreciate to have in this league. Obviously, when he came, people were disappointed in Southampton's miss for, from Pochettino going. But I, I feel like Koeman's such a, a nice man and such a, a good manager that, in a way, I never want Southampton to lose unless they play us. And Southampton had a brilliant season last season. The kind of thing we're aspiring to become that top six, top seven team, have a really surprising campaign and obviously we're on track for that at the moment but we need to keep these results going and last season this is the results that Southampton got kind of away against Everton and, and things like that so we need to try and pick up points against Southampton, I'm not saying it's going to be easy and in recent times we've kind of done alright away at St Mary's, obviously last season one was poor but in the championship I remember especially the season Southampton got promoted, we beat them at St Mary's. David Nugent's got a really long-range goal. So Southampton, you know, we can beat them. We saw at the end of last season we can beat them. If we're on our day, we can beat anyone. We just need to make sure we put in another professional performance like we did away at Norwich. Having said that, I think I'm going to have to go for a draw in this game. I'm going to go for two all. I think there's going to be goals in it, but I think both sides are susceptible of a back and can concede goals. So I'm going to go for two all. I'm not going to give goal scorers because I have no idea really. I mean, I'm not even sure he's going to be playing so far. But you can see the stats around the screen. If you want to see any more of those stats or want to look more in depth into this, go to soccerweight.com and you can find all the information on those games there, head to head and everything like that. That's all for this video then of the preview for the Southampton game tomorrow at the St Mary's. Obviously, I will have a review of the game up straight after the final whistle blows. As soon as I film it and render it, it will be up. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think the score of the game will be. Please like the video. Let me know you've enjoyed the content. As always, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.